Hi there, welcome to this course on VPC and networking on Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure. My name is Harshit and I'm instructor for this class. In this course, you're going to learn about various network components on AWS and Azure. You will learn to create and manage Amazon Virtual Private Cloud and various network components on AWS. Later on, you will learn about various networking services available on Microsoft Azure. Here you will learn to create virtual private cloud or VPC, subnets and internet gateways and route tables on AWS. And you will also learn about DNS, traffic manager, firewall, network security groups and routing on Microsoft Azure. So if you are curious to learn these networking skills on AWS and Azure cloud computing platforms, you start learning right now. See you in the class. Hey friend, welcome to this lesson. We are going to learn about various kinds of networking services on Amazon Web Services. So let's start with this. So this is a AWS Web Console where you can navigate to the services panel to see through various services. So here in this lesson, we are going to explore various kinds of VPC services on the VPC dashboard, virtual private cloud. So when you scroll down over the services panel, you got uh, networking and CDN, content delivery network services. So here you got various kind of services and let's start with VPC. VPC or virtual private cloud is one of the most important uh, service on AWS that's widely used. So on the right hand side, you can see there are various cloud regions and you can deploy your vpc anywhere in any region on the cloud okay so vpc is one of the core services that is very important if you look for aws service uh, certification exams such as solution architect uh, cloud practitioner and other exams so it is one of the crucial things so if you are going to deploy your real life applications on the cloud uh, networking must be on your mind even if you are not a networking professional, you must be aware of a few of these things. Okay, so when you are using an EC2 service or other services, you will require this thing. So don't panic. Uh, let us. Do, we are going to just explore various services here uh, that you can do with the VPC dashboard, such as subnets, route table, internet gateways, and other things here. So VPC allow you to manage uh, various networking. Uh, entities together on a single dashboard so it can be easily managed without any much effort uh, if you have a background in networking and you are working in an organization that requires cloud as a networking implementation you could do a lot of things here okay so for any reason you can explore so there are a lot of options here uh, if you are a security professional if you're looking for a security role, uh, you could harness various kinds of networking implementations. You can control where and how your traffic flows to your web application on the cloud. You can control each and everything. You can always monitor it. If you want to go in depth, you can choose CloudWatch or other services. So here, let's take uh, the existing VPC. So when you create an AWS account, you by default get a default VPC. Uh, this is the default one and you can always create multiple vpc so vpcs are generally charge free until they are connected to any other aws services so you can create a large amount of vpcs on the cloud and here in the vpc we got multiple subnets and here we got uh, six different subnet groups and you can customize each one of them here are various actions that you can perform if you select any subnet you will find all the details here such as ARN, Amazon resource name, the subnet ID that can be used to link. ARN is a very important thing if you are using a command line interface or you want to integrate this service to any other service, you can use it or creating some uh, application. So here uh, you are going to learn these things and these are the route tables and other things that you can customize here. So AWS allows you to uh, visually manage everything that goes on the backend and you can visualize how your backend implementation would work how your network things will look like you can customize each subnet by going to the 
uh, actions or you can always create a new subnet so you can create a routing table how your traffic will be routed and you can create a internet gateways how it will be connected and you can have dscp client uh, elastic ips you can have static ips as well you can have endpoints you have manage prefix and different things here so if you want to create something here you can analyze um, something you can run reachability analysis and different kind of testing as well so uh, if you already know a lot of networking concept uh, you would you just need to uh, go through various services find various options and you will be easy to implement these things and otherwise just stay focused on what you want to do don't uh, if you are not sure about what uh, settings you should do uh, just go with the default in here okay so when you create a vpc uh, a respective subnet will all uh, automatically be created so you do not need to uh, create a subnet uh, alone and even if you want to customize it you can always add on or revert back to the default settings and if you're sure you can always customize everything otherwise just go with the default so here if you want to edit the inbound rules you can go these things you got various kind of options here you can select all traffic or custom tcps uh, icmp clients secure shells telnet different protocols you can customize you can also define your own custom protocol and customize this thing you can provide the source ip address the you can either decide whether to block this kind of traffic or allow so if you have some kind of list although you can implement these kind of things in the security services as well using aws firewall and other things but if you want to control this thing to the networking level using inbound rules or these things you can customize this thing so aws uh, sometimes allow you to have multi layer of security models so it is better when you are implementing a security things on the cloud even if you're secure if you're not a security professional security must be your concern if you are a solution architect if you are a network engineer or anyone uh, you should design a system that is robust enough to uh, handle a lot of uh, things messy things around so go through these things it will be very useful and also if you are uh, setting for the examinations aws examinations there is no shortcut you have to just explore various services find various options and test it how it works this will be a practical knowledge that would be more reliable in your job profile as well as certification exams here you can also customize outbound rules you can set it to default and otherwise just move on so once you create a vpn you based on the region you can customize this thing in the coming lessons you will be learning about uh, how to create a vpn subnets route tables internet gateways how to connect with the ec2 and other things so this is how you can also connect with a network firewall and other things so just explore vpc dashboard and other networking services dive deep into various concepts and it can be used for security as well as other professions keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friends here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating a virtual private cloud or vpc on aws so let's start with this as you can see here we have logged into the aws console and launched our vpc service so once you log into it you will find this dashboard on the left hand side you got various options where you can create your own vpc subnet route table and much more so just go to the vpc options and here you can see we have one default vpc enabled that is there available once you create an aws account and it is by default next we can create multiple vpcs and just go to create vpc to create a new one and you can use it for various kinds of aws services on the cloud so as the name suggests it is a virtual private cloud so you define your own networking specifications and will recreate it your vpc will have a different subnet and other options as well and here it, we just need to provide a name for it uh, just provide some name and uh, just give it a name it infra uh, we are providing 
Next, we need to define two different IP CIDR blocks for IP version 4. Uh, we can provide some block here. I'm using 10.0.0.0 slash 60. And next for IP version 6, you got three different options. Either you can go with a no option, no, no CIDR block. It will directly move all the traffic to IP version 4. Or you can use the Amazon provided block or you can provide your own block as well. In your case, uh, you have to identify the pool. You have to define it or or you can also enable different things. You can go with the tenancy, uh, the default tenancy is suggested. Otherwise, you can customize as well. Next, you got uh, tags if you want to create. It will automatically create it by the name. So tags are useful once you create different IAM roles and you connect with different users it would be easily identifiable say if you have multiple vpcs on there and you get confused you can locate them with the tags otherwise just leave it where it falls and create a vpc so this is how you create a vpc in few simple steps next we can configure a lot of settings networking configurations here in detail uh, you can find the most useful information the VPC ID uh, and different settings, the DHCP options. Uh, you can check the CIDRs, the flow logs. You can create a flow log on itself. You can create various things here. You got various options. You can enable the filter to accept or reject various kinds of traffic, or you can have the maximum aggregation interval defined. You can add uh, various things, destination for log details. You can select a log group to go to glue crawler. Glue crawler, AWS Glue is a powerful service which automatically takes a lot of things. And if you provide the glue crawler, it will fetch the log information. Otherwise, you can go to the CloudWatch or configure CloudTrail settings. And next, you got to define S3 bucket for ARN uh, where information could be stored. Uh, so what is S3? S3 is simple storage service on AWS. It's a simple block storage that provides a bucket. Just to navigate here, you can create a lot of bucket. Bucket is like a like folder where you upload files and it will be uniquely identifiable. You have to just copy the ERN of your bucket that you want to add here. Uh, ERN for Amazon resource name. Uh, this is a unique ID given to each instance or service created on the cloud. For various kind of services even the vpn have its own arn if you want to connect a vpn to ec2 you have to provide the arn and we have provided the s3 arn here so it will be automatically identified with this uniquely s3 bucket and next hit create if you want to create these things and this is how uh, we create a vpc connected to s3 and other services you can go to the actions and you will find various options. You can edit the DHCP option setting, dynamic host control protocol, and different kind of things here. Uh, various network parameters are set there. And once you go to the VPCs, you got here two VPCs created. The first one that has no name is the default VPC, and second one is the VPC that we created right now. You can manage more network settings here, uh, but leave it for now. Here uh, we got this same information here. So on AWS, uh, it is easy to create a VPC and you can always connect it to a, a different kind of services across different regions of the globe. So try to create your own VPC uh, on AWS. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. You are going to learn more in the coming lessons. Hi, welcome back friends here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating a subnet on AWS. So let's start with this. So this is our VPC dashboard where you can configure various networking things and after we have created a VPC next step is to create a subnet. So what is a subnet? Subnet is a logical subdivision of an IP address. So once you create an IP address you got one IP address and you can divide this single IP address into multiple networks that is called as a subnet. So here we can create a subnet. Just go to the subnets and here by default we got six different subnets created. 
and just go to the right hand side top right to create a new subnet if you want to create so you have to provide the name of the VPC that you want to connect uh, you can go with the default one or one that we created later on so we have used this new VPC and it automatically fetches the associated VPC CIDRs that we have defined in the VPC next you need to provide some subnet settings first let's start with create, providing a name for the subnet just write any name we will be using the same name infrastructure uh, IT infra and we use this subnet we will prefix it next we need to define the region where this will be available we take the US East Virginia region and you can provide this thing next you have to define IP version 4 CIDR block that you want to use it's slash 0 slash 8 16 24 or different option you, there are various custom options you can choose from them next you can provide various kinds of tags but this is an optional thing uh, you can leave it you can create multiple subnets from the same dashboard you can add different subnets just provide the name for the second subnet if you want to create or leave it leave it as it is if you want to create one subnet just provide details for the one if you want to create multiple subnets you can create at once and also you can go to the dashboard and create one by one so subnets are important part on the VPC to handle different kind of requests on the cloud it works in the same way that other applications are deployed on the server be it on-premise or the cloud networking is there everywhere so you want to have better control with the help of cloud you easily get control of all the properties at one place so creating a VPC on AWS is a uh, not that much difficult to apply because all the networking physical infrastructure is handled by the AWS cloud and you are just a controller here so you have to provide this thing you can choose the appropriate block if it, there's some error it will show you the error or alert or otherwise just try to rectify it uh, the possibility of uh, an error is generally because there is a mismatch between the uh, CIDR that you define in the VPC and the subnets that you create. So it is automatically connected to the VPC so it must follow the protocol or the format that is defined on the VPC. And later on after creating subnets you can create a routing table. You can have the internet gateway and other things configured right there so here it is we have used 10.0.0.0 slash 24 so it is here and you can go with the create subnet once uh, you have defined it is being created so this is the custom subnet that we created on aws you can create multiple subnets so for our new vpc we have one subnet all other subnets was for the default VPC that comes created with the AWS and here we can create our own subnets so creating a subnet is not that difficult process it's easy but if you're a network professional you can customize various properties according to your organizations or infrastructure requirements so here on the downside side you got various options for route table network access control list CIDRs and different options you got the subnet ARN that you can connect with various kinds of cloud instances whenever you require it to connect just the way we connected the s3 bucket uh, in the creating a VPC session and here you can use this thing you can go to the subnet option on the virtual private cloud dashboard to identify various subnets and you can go into details of each subnet and customize it later on try to create various subnets and VPC on AWS keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friends here in this lesson you are going to learn about creating and attaching the internet gateway to your virtual private cloud on AWS so let's start with this 
so we have created a vpc and created various subnet for it and next step is to attach an internet gateway so that you can allow you to access it access your vpc across the internet so let's do it so just go to the internet gateway option right below the route tables and here we have one default internet gateway and it has been set to the default uh, vpc that's been created with the aws account so we can either customize it or create a new internet gateway from scratch you can create multiple internet gateways and attach them to different vpcs here you are going to learn these things so just click on creating an internet gateway and this is an option to create a gateway so first you need to provide the name of this new gateway uh, just provide any name here let's name it vpc underscore it infrastructure uh, you could provide any custom name as you like just keep the name of your internet gateway subnet and vpc little bit common so that if you have multiple of such uh, network components you may get confused which subnet or internet gateway is related to uh, what vpc or so on so i'm using the same notation here next step is to select your vpc uh, internet gateway and go to actions and attach to a vpc so we have created a internet gateway and we have to attach it so here you have to select from the available vpcs and just select this thing uh, and next step is to select the platform that you want to connect it is just like a backend server uh, i'm using the linux you can go with a, a windows version or other linux distro it's your choice uh, you can check it here's uh, unix windows and this linux uh, this will be used to access your vpc or other network components through a command line and here you got a desktop applications that you can access currently we are using the console aws console and you can use the cli or powershell to access it next uh, it is connected when you are done at, you can attach and more after you have attached a vpc you can also detach it the same way you go to actions you can find the details you can detach it from a vpc uh, let's go to the details and here we got some information about this vpc we got the vpc id uh, the gateway id and we can use it just try to detach and once you're sure you can detach so it's easy to attach an internet gateway but it's an important step uh, before making your vpc accessible through internet so if you have an organization that have some applications that require to be deployed on a vpc first create a vpc then add, add some subnets and then you can create internet gateway route tables and much more so these are the network components try creating various network components on your own create an internet gateway and attach it to vpc keep learning and keep moving ahead Hi friend, we are learning cloud computing with Microsoft Azure and here in this lecture we're going to learn about Azure DNS or domain name system. So let's start with Azure DNS. Azure DNS is a powerful networking tool uh, which is used for hosting services for DNS domains that provide name resolution by using Microsoft Azure infrastructure. By hosting our domains in Azure, we can manage our DNS records by using the same credentials, APIs, tools, and billing as other Azure services. So making it as a service, we can manage things easier. DNS domains in Azure DNS are hosted on Azure's global network of DNS name servers. Azure, Azure uh, DNS uh, uses Anycast networking and each DNS query is answered by the closest available DNS server to provide faster performance and high ability for their domain. So what, uh, how DNS works, uh, let's take an example. Uh, say we have a user or a client uh, who requests for a certain uh, resource on the website. So he has to provide the domain name for our web application, say anything, abc.com. Uh, the DNS server will provide the IP address corresponding to that domain. And based on that IP address, the user can connect to any resource on the website. A bit web application, virtual machines, 
or other resources. With DNS, we can host our uh, DNS alongside our applications. We can accelerate our application with faster DNS queries and rely on Microsoft Global Network of DNS Server. We can get DNS updates without the wait, uh, without being waiting thing. Uh, then we have the Azure DNS private zones. With DNS, we can use our favorite DNS applications in Azure. We can simplify the migration uh, because uh, we have the brands that are already that we already know and the skills that our team has. So uh, we can migrate uh, our applications using virtual network, having the similar experience. So we can enhance our security as well. We can add uh, different DNS security to our virtual network by deploying a DNS firewall uh, and help um, mitigate our DNS related security issues such as phishing, phishing and data exfiltration. It could be used uh, to provide traffic from other sources and divert it from different things. So the local DNS server's role is to uh, provide the request and the response uh, to the designated servers. So uh, we have a user who has a request for a website, but there could be a large number of users and large number of servers. And for various things, the resources may be kept in different servers. So the DNS will uh, redirect, uh, uh, the local DNS will redirect the request uh, to the designated server where the resource is being kept for a particular request. And so we have the DNS zone, uh, which corresponds to the overall uh, request based on the partnership program and other things. DNS helps uh, resolve the aliasing. Uh, if we have different things or short keys uh, for a long query that is called alias and uh, uh, we can set multiple aliases for different applications located in different locations so we can resolve things and it could be integrated with uh, other services like traffic manager or other tools. So here it is how the DNS would look like when we create a DNS zone on Azure. Uh, it will have different things. Uh, uh, it will have multiple options. It will provide the name servers addresses and have four name servers are there. We have the resource ID, the subscription ID, and more things. Based on the name servers, we could access our utilities. So it has the various advanced security features. Azure DNS is based on Azure Resource Manager, uh, which provides multiple features. With Resource Manager, we can access things based on a role-based access and control who has the access to specific actions for our organization. We can create identity and access management IAM roles and provide the users or developers or testers anything in order to access things or resources. Each employee does not have the complete access. So we can have a different set of isolations being done there. Then uh, it provides activity lock to monitor how users in our organization uh, has been modified a resource or find an error by troubleshooting. So we can continuously monitor and go to the logs in order to detect uh, the activities that are going or done by the by our own place. Then the resource uh, locking to a lock of subscription, resource groups or resource, we could add the locks. The locks prevents other users in our organization from accidentally deleting or modifying critical resources. So we can use the locks with resources. We can have the alias records as well. Uh, the alias records is a uh, DNS support that provides the record sets. We can use alias record sets to refer to an Azure resource such as Azure public IP address or Azure traffic manager profile or an Azure content delivery network CDN endpoint. If the IP address of the underlying resource changes, the alias record is seamlessly updated itself during the DNS resolution. The alias record set points to the service instance and the service instance is associated with an IP address. So we can have the LAS records being done there. We are going to learn more in the coming lectures. Till then, keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, friend. Welcome back. We are learning networking on Microsoft Azure Cloud. And here in this lecture, we're going to learn about Azure Virtual WAN or Wide Area Network. We have three kinds of uh, networks uh, that we have studied in the school. The local area network, metropolitan area network, or wide area network.
or we can have a personal area network with a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. So we can have a, a virtual scenario on the cloud as well. Uh, we don't actually use a wide area network other than internet or a combination of multiple wide area networks that is called as internet. But for our corporate or enterprise data that could span over the world, we could create a virtual wide area network. So let us understand what is wide area network on the cloud. With Azure Virtual WAN or wide area network, we could create a simple unified global connectivity with security offered on the cloud for various kind of resources, applications, virtual machines or other tools. Azure Virtual WAN is a networking service providing optimized and automated branch to branch connectivity through Microsoft Azure. Virtual WAN allows customer to connect branches to each other and Azure centralizing our, their network and security needs uh, with virtual appliances such as, such as firewalls, uh, network security services and more. Azure regions serve as hubs that you can choose to connect your branches to. So we can have multiple Azure regions and we can have multiple hubs in order to connect our branches. Once the branches are connected, you can leverage the Azure backbone to establish branch to virtual network or branch to branch connectivity. We can automate large scale branch connectivity and Azure Virtual WAN brings together many Azure cloud connectivity services such as site to site VPN, uh, express route, point to site user VPN into a single operational interface. We can choose from any of the options available there. Uh, the connectivity to Azure v, uh, VNets or virtual networks is established by using virtual network connections. We could unify network and policy management and we can optimize routing using the Microsoft Global Network and we can handle different kind of traffic, uh, filter it based on legitimacy and different factors. We could also implement the load balancer and certain multiple things. So what are various components or options that we can use uh, with Azure Virtual Network, uh, WAN, sorry. So Azure WAN wide area network may consist of vir multiple virtual networks or could be linked with multiple virtual networks. The traffic could move from the internet, all the virtual networks, uh, consisting of on-premises data, all the cloud resources. It could be connected to the express route or site-to-site -site VPN using a, consisting of multiple branches of your organization's data center. We could also connect a point to site VPN using the internet or direct connections for remote users. We could have massive scale with software defined connectivity uh, where we can connect our global branch offices, point to scale locations and sites uh, website using Azure and the Microsoft Global Network. We can plan, configure and seamlessly deploy new connections tuned for growing ecosystem and market rating partners. Open VPN clients and Azure Express route connections could be used here. We have one place for managing our network. We could deploy, manage and monitor our sites and connections on Azure our virtual networks through a unified portal experience. We got optimized security and agility with our global network and you can get uh, experience, uh, uh, experience, you could get at experience of the opt optimal uh, routing uh, with minimal latency for branch to branch and branch to Azure connectivity. So you can have multiple branches and you can handle the route, uh, routing of the traffic and the data packets that move through the network uh, with minimal latency. So it has a latency of just one minute or 60 seconds uh, and it is updated uh, very quickly. When you connect your on-premise sites to Azure and your traffic enters the Microsoft network, it stays there while traversing the globe. We can have multiple uh, virtual WAN resources. Say we have the virtual WAN, uh, which is a resource that represents a virtual overlay of our Azure network and is a collection of multiple resources. It consists of uh, links to uh, all our virtual hubs that we would like to have within a virtual network, a virtual WAN. Virtual WAN are consist of uh, various isolated resources from each other that cannot contain a common hub. So we can have a unique hub for each instances. Then we have the hub, which is a virtual hub in the Microsoft Managed Virtual Network. It is virtual, not a physical hub. A hub is a networking device and we don't have that thing here directly. The hub contains uh, various services endpoints 
that enable connections from uh, on-premise network sites like VPN sites uh, to the cloud. The hub is the core of your uh, network in a region and there can be only one hub per Azure region. We can create a hub using Azure Polter and it creates a virtual hub, the virtual network and a virtual hub VPN gateway. Then we have the virtual hub virtual network connection. Uh, the hub virtual network connection resource could be used for connecting the hub seamlessly with our virtual network. So uh, it has a rel high reliability and without delay, the data uh, is being transferred. We can connect uh, virtual networks that are within the same hub region and from the outer regions as well. The hub route table could be used uh, to create a virtual hub route and apply the routing to a virtual hub route table. You can also apply multiple routes to virtual hub routing table with a route table. So here's a scenario. We have a virtual hub having uh, connections uh, with uh, its peers that are virtual networks in a region, say, uh, Japan East. So we can have multiple Azure regions, say Japan East, uh, Singapore, uh, Mumbai, India, or US East, US West, Europe, and other regions. So in each region, when we connect, uh, we have a virtual hub installed there, and the virtual hub is connected to different virtual networks using the peers or connections. And we have the VPN line, a virtual private network cloud line for connecting the on-premises and the cloud resources based on the virtual network. So this was about uh, Azure Virtual WAN, a wide area network. Now try building your own solution. Till then, keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back, friend. We're learning cloud computing with Microsoft Azure. And here in this lecture, we're going to learn about Traffic Manager, which is a popular network uh, tool available on the cloud. Uh, we have multiple requests uh, coming out from everywhere in the world, and we have to manage uh, the traffic at the request and everything on the net. So the traffic manager is a very useful tool, and we're going to learn about this here in this lecture. So let's start with this. As your traffic manager could be used to route incoming traffic for high performance and availability of our resources. Uh, the Traffic Manager is a domain name system, a DNS-based traffic load balancer that enables it to uh, distribute traffic optimally to services across global Azure regions while providing high availability and responsiveness. The Traffic Manager uses DNS to direct client requests to the most appropriate service endpoint based on the traffic routing method and the health of the endpoints. An endpoint is any internet-facing service hosted inside or outside of the Azure. Uh, based on those endpoints, anything uh, makes connection or the request. The Traffic Manager provides a range of uh, traffic routing method and endpoints uh, monitoring options to suit different application rates and uh, uh, automatic uh, failover models. The Traffic Manager is resilient to failure, including the failure of an entire Azure region. We could obtain a high availability with multiple automatic failover options. Uh, it increases application responsiveness by leveraging performance routing. Uh, it provides seamless, uh, seamlessly combined on-premise systems and cloud systems. Uh, we can have applications from on-premise, uh, the cloud, and a hybrid solution. The traffic manager could be used in all the cases. We can get actionable insights based on our user traffic volumes and patterns. So here's our traffic manager. We uh, may have a uh, multiple copies of our instance or different resources distributed across the world. So traffic manager sits in between and dowers the request on an appropriate server based on the nature of the request. The traffic manager implements four different policies, the latency, round robin, failover, or nested. You could use any of them. The latency policy would you direct to the closest service. So when a request comes, the closest resource uh, would be directed uh, from where the request has been fetched. Then uh, it uses a round robin to distribute across all services so that any service may not sit idle and all resources are properly utilized. Then there's a failover policy which direct to the backup if primary fails. Uh, in case a primary node fails, primary resource fails, I will redirect to the backup or the recovery. 
then it uh, implements the next adoption where um, flexible multi-level policies are being implemented. So here it is uh, the traffic manager uh, having uh, connected with the uh, different zones, say a uh, US East or Central US, uh, which have the load balancer on it and multiple virtual machines or different instances or of our resources has been created there. So the load balancers uh, manages the internal traffic and the traffic manager would send external traffic based on the resources. So it could be imagined as a load balancer, but is it is on the higher level of abstraction. It could be distributed across a different child uh, profiles that could be there. And so as it is abstract on the top level and it could be considered as a parent profile for performance based uh, traffic routing. And the child profile could be used for uh, sitting in the additional zones and which could have a different production trial or different environments as well. We could implement the nesting of the, this thing as well. Then we have the DNS based load balancing. Uh, Azure Traffic Manager operates at the DNS layer to quickly and efficiently direct the incoming DNS request based on the routing method of our choice. An example could be like sending the request to the closest endpoints, improving the responsiveness of our applications or things like that. We can choose from flexible traffic routing options. Uh, we could have the reduced application downtime. We could have the improved app performance and content delivery. We could have the distributed user uh, traffic over multiple locations. So in order to choose from a uh, flexible traffic routing options, I, as your traffic manager offers four types of DNS based traffic routing, the failover uh, performance in geographic and a weighted round robin. We can choose uh, whatever feels right based on our uh, scenarios. We can also use a nested profiles as well. Then we have a uh, reduced application downtime. Uh, it, uh, the traffic manager can improve the ability of uh, important applications by monitoring our uh, Azure services or external websites and services, automatically detecting uh, users to next best location when there is a failure in order for have a recovery disaster management being done. Then we can improve the app performance and content delivery uh, where traffic manager makes our applications more responsive and improves the content delivery times by directing our customers to Azure endpoints or an external location with the lowest network latency. We can distribute user traffic over multiple locations uh, by where uh, a traffic manager can direct our customer traffic and distribute it across multiple locations uh, such as cloud services or web pages. The traffic manager can also help with the geofencing needs. Uh, say we when we don't want a traffic from a particular region to come up across uh, any other region, so we could use the geofencing using the geographic routing methods as well. Then we can have uh, more options as well. We can use our own on-premise data centers. Your traffic manager has a popular option for on-premise scenarios, including bus to cloud, migrate to failover to the cloud, and we can use it to upgrade our performance uh, maintenance on the site data, data center without inconveniencing customers. We can have the geographic fencing of our application users, where traffic manager provides uh, with the geographic routing capabilities to ensure content localization and adherence to data sovereignty regulations. We can apply geofencing it allows us to connect from specific geographic locations to be routed to a specific endpoint. We can obtain actionable insights from our users. Uh, we can use traffic uh, view capability in Traffic Manager to see whether our users are connecting from and the quality of their digital experience. We can learn all these things with the Traffic Manager. Try building an old solution. Till then, keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back friend. We're learning cloud computing with Microsoft Azure and here in this lecture, we're going to learn about Azure Firewall. So let's start with Firewall. So Azure Firewall is a cloud native uh, network security application to protect your Azure virtual network resources. Uh, it is a cloud native firewall as a service offering 
which enables customers to centrally govern all their traffic flows using a DevOps approach. The service supports both applications such as uh, github.com and the network level filtering rules. So it enables uh, this a simple firewall technology on the virtual network to protect or resource it uh, and applications on the cloud. So general firewall just simply prevents the unwanted traffic from the internet uh, to the internal private network and it allows uh, the request or data packets moving from the private network to the internet. So the firewall is a first uh, line of security that our network may have. In order to secure our virtual appliances on the cloud or on-premise, we could use uh, this kind of thing. The Azure Firewall provides a stateful firewall as a service. Uh, it is built on high availability and unrestricted cloud scalability. Uh, it, is, it has the ability to centrally create, enforce, and log applications and network connectivity policies. It is based on the threat intelligence-based filtering. So anything uh, that could be any packet that could be uh, an unle unlegitimate or uh, a spoofing packet or things like uh, attack that could be done there could be blocked. The source and destination network address translation has been supported here. The full, it is fully integrated with Azure Monitor for logging and analytics. It supports the hybrid connectivity through development behind VPN and Express Root Gateways. It has a stateful firewall as a service. It has high alerty and the cloud scale. Network and application level connectivity policies are being there. It can filter the outbound traffic, uh, HTTP traffic and network filtering control based on the IP address, port number, and the protocol. It could restrict the access, prevent data exfiltration, and create connectivity policies across multiple subscription and virtual networks. It could be used for intelligent uh, near real-time security with a delay of just one minute. Uh, so it could be used uh, for alert and deny traffic to and from malicious IP addresses and domains. It could be used with uh, the graph Security graph that powers uh, Microsoft Threat Intelligence and is used for multiple services, uh, including Azure Security Center. It could communicate with internet resources using SNET and DNET. The source network address translation that allows outside firewall to identify traffic originating from a virtual network and inbound traffic filtering for backend services in a virtual network that is supported by destination network address translation. It has central logging and analytics tool. Uh, Azure Firewall could be connected to multiple appliances. Say we have a virtual network that is central virtual network uh, and Azure Firewall protects it from the external traffic. The traffic is denied by default uh, from the internet from the outside and the threat intel the net network uh, address translation, the ne network and application traffic filtering rules allows the inbound or outbound access based on certain parameters that matches. It could be connected to spoke virtual networks or VNets across our organization. It could be also used for threat intelligence and it could be connected to the on-premise resources as well to make it more secure. So the threat intelligence based filtering uh, works on Microsoft Azure uh, in a varied fashion. Azure Firewall can be configured to alert antenna traffic to and from malicious IP addresses and domains in the near real time. The IP addresses and domains are sourced from Microsoft Threat Intelligence Feed. The Microsoft Intelligence Security Graph uh, that is available from the dashboard when you create an instance for firewall uh, powers a Microsoft Threat Intelligence and pro uh, provides security in multiple Microsoft products and services. Uh, it could be used with Security Center, Azure Sentinel, and more tools. The Threat Intelligence based filtering is default enabled in alert mode for all Azure Firewall deployments, providing logging of all matching indicators. The customers can adjust behavior to alert or deny. So firewall could be used uh, with different applications there. We can manage our firewall as well. We could <coughs> manage the firewall, the logging analytics of da uh, threat data and actionable insights that are crucial and central themes to planning, building, and operating applications and infrastructure. 
Azure Firewall provides full integration with Azure Monitor. The logs can be sent to the log analytics, a storage, and event hubs. Azure Log Analytics allows us for creation of rich dashboards and visualization, along with custom, custom data queries with this powerful integration. It provides a common place for all our logging needs with vast options to customize the way we customize our data. Here is a dashboard for a log analytics workspace. It has a log data and we can run the query and based on the different query we can perform different tasks. We have different protocols, the source, IP, the uh, port number and everything is being displayed based on the request that could be there. The phishing could be detected, the bot network could be detected and it could block or show you the message. We could have the service tag filtering in order to protect our network as well. Along with threat intelligence based filtering, we are adding support for service tag which has been a highly requested feature by the user. A service tag represents a group of IP address prefixes for a specific Microsoft service such as SQL Azure, SQL Key Vault, uh, Azure Service Verse to simplify network rule creation. Microsoft supports a service tagging for a rich set of Azure services which includes managing the address prefixes encompassed by the service tag and automatically update the service tag as addresses change. Azure Firewall service tag can be used in the network rules destination field I will continue to add support for additional service tag over the time. We have central management uh, with firewall. Azure Firewall uh, public REST API can be used by third party security policy management tools to provide a centralized management experience for Azure Firewalls, network security groups, and network uh, virtual appliances. So, this was about a firewall on Microsoft Azure. Uh, try building your own solution. Till then, keep learning and keep moving ahead. <coughs> Hi, welcome back, friend. Uh, we're learning cloud computing with Microsoft Azure, and here in this lecture, we're going to learn about NSG or Network Security Group on Azure, which is a networking service uh, available on the cloud. So let's start with NSG. Azure uh, Network Security Group includes rules that allow you to uh, deny traffic to a virtual sub a network subnet or network interface or both. When you enable diagnostic logging for an NSG, you can log the following categories of information, uh, the event and the rule counter. Uh, we have a VPN or VNet, a virtual uh, network on the cloud uh, connecting to on-premise solutions. And in order to secure uh, that virtual network, we have to implement certain rules that allow or deny traffic based on different requests or nature of the packets or different things. So we can have the event and the rule counter. So the event uh, has entries that are locked for which NSG rules and network security groups rules are applied to virtual machines. Based on MAC address, it uh, filters out the traffic. It provides a log of the information. The status for these rules are collected every 60 seconds. So uh, every minute we can have the new event generated and the new rules. Uh, the status is being updated so we can track everything in the real life. Then a rule can counter, it contains the entries for how many times each NSG rule is applied to deny or allow traffic. We can uh, diagnose uh, rule logs that are only available for NSG deployed through the Azure Resource Manager deployment model and we cannot uh, enable diagnostic logging for NSG deployed through the classic deployment model. So we have to implement uh, NSG uh, on the cloud with a proper configuration. So here is a, a cloud security model. We have Azure deployments, uh, which is kept within the network virtual appliances or virtual networks. It is protected by the NSD or UDR layer network security group. And it, it is kept under the virtual network isolation. So the external traffics need to be monitored or blocked. Uh, if they could harm the system. We always want our client request to be faced as a deployment, but only the legitimate, legitimate request. Then we have the endpoints uh, where the request and everything gets entered. And then we have the DDoS protection layer uh, to prevent the uh, distributed denial of service attacks. So we can implement these things uh, on the internet to secure 
or deployments on the cloud. We could integrate a virtual network with different applications. Say we have a, the Azure SQL database, uh, we have the storage options, we have the subnets, and everything kept in the virtual network. So we can have the NSG, Network Security Group, between our virtual network and the internet. It prevents uh, the malicious or non-legitimate traffic from the internet and secure our appliances, virtual machines, and different things. Then we have the traffic routing. So let us understand what is traffic routing because our traffic routing is very important when it comes to network. Uh, Azure creates uh, several default routes for outbound traffic from a subnet and we can override the Azure default routing by creating a route table and associating it with subnet. Common reasons for overriding Azure's default routing are uh, because uh, we want uh, traffic between subnets to flow through NVA. Uh, to, then we have the different routing tables and the force traffic through NVM. Because we want to force all internet bound traffic through network or on-premise through uh, Azure VPN gateway, forcing internet traffic on-premise for inspection and logging is often referred to as force tunneling. So we can have the force tunneling installed there uh, from on-premise, from cloud re uh, resources, from internet, and we have uh, different things to be enabled. We have the default security rules here. Uh, so Azure creates a, a different default rules in which each network security group that you create. For inbound traffic, it has multiple rules. It has a allow VNet inbound category, the allow Azure load balancer inbound, uh, deny all inbound, uh, and different, say, uh, we have configured different ports. You could change this thing. You have the destination, uh, say virtual network, or any other IP, starting IP, the destination port, the protocols that are being supported, and the access layer. So it may allow or deny the request. So it has different priorities based on different scenarios. Similarly, for outbound traffic, we have different rules, and we can implement that thing. Then comes to application security groups. That is a special part of NSD, and we can secure our applications uh, using this application security group. Application security groups enable us uh, to configure network security as a natural extension of an application's uh, structure, allowing us to group virtual machines and define network security policies based on these groups. We can reuse our security policies at a scale without manual maintenance of explicit IP addresses. The platform handles the complexity of explicit IP addresses and the multiple rule sets is being implemented by the Azure platform. And we can allow us uh, just to focus on the business logic, development, and other things. So we don't need to worry about handling such things. We have to once install uh, the application security group, the network security group, and such thing on the virtual network. We have to create it uh, for inbound and outbound traffic, configure different things, and uh, keep our application safe, and don't need to worry about more things. Try building your own solution. Till then, keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back, friends. We are learning cloud computing with Microsoft Azure. And here in this lecture, we're going to learn about Azure VNet or virtual network. So let's start with VNet. So Azure virtual network is a representation of your own network in a cloud. It is similar to a virtual private cloud or VPC. It is a logical isolation of Azure cloud dedicated to your subscription. Uh, you can use VNets to provision and manage virtual private networks or VPNs. You could create uh, VPNs, you could manage things, or you could uh, optimize your solutions. In Azure and optionally, uh, you could link uh, virtual networks or other v VNets in the Azure or with your on-premise IT infrastructure or create a hybrid or class uh, cl cross-premises uh, solutions. Each virtual network you create has its own CIDR block and can be linked to other uh, virtual networks and on-premises network as long as the CIDR blocks do not overlap. You also have control of the DNS server settings for virtual networks and segmentation of the virtual network into subnets. So with VNet, we can create a dedicated uh, dedicated private uh, cloud-only VNet sometimes 
uh, we don't require a cross-premise configuration for our solutions. Uh, when we create a virtual network, uh, our services and virtual machines within our VNet, or virtual network, can communicate directly and securely with each other in the cloud. Uh, we can still configure endpoint connections for the virtual machines and services that require internet communication as part of our solution. We can securely extend our data center with our virtual networks and can build traditional site-to-site -site, uh, VPNs to uh, securely scale our data center capacity. Site-to-site -site VPNs use IP security to provide a secure connection between our corporate uh, VPN gateway and Azure. So we can still have the on-premise uh, data center as well, along with the cloud, and we can create a, a virtual network uh, similar to the lease line or the direct connection, direct private connection, uh, but on the cloud. We can enable a hybrid cloud scenarios like virtual networks that give us flexibility to support a range of hybrid cloud scenarios. We can securely connect uh, cloud-based applications to any type of on-premise systems, such as mainframes and Unix systems. There are various tools that we can use to create a VPN. And we can use uh, Azure Portal directly. We can directly create a, a VNet from Azure Portal and create a service for that. Uh, when we create a resource for a uh, Virtual network, we, we, are, we get various options like CDN content delivery network, load balancers, and other networking things. We have to provide the IP addresses, we have to provide the subnets, and various details that we need to configure. We can manage everything from there. Uh, we can also create it uh, using the PowerShell or the Azure command line interface from our desktop or any other applications. The command line interface uh, would uh, allow you to, uh, without, uh, would allow you not to log in directly uh, from the website of the Azure. And you could run various commands regarding a virtual network. So it is simple to use. Uh, and it provides you more flexibility over virtual network. Uh, you get more flexibility with the CLI. You have to authenticate only once. So you don't need to provide your credentials multiple times. And it will be more secure. You could also use SSH, a secure shell in order to access your virtual network. But however, when you want to create it, you can go through the other of the option. You can also use a network configuration file like a NetCFG for classic virtual network only. Uh, it allows you to build a hybrid infrastructure that we can control. Uh, we can secure our connections with IP security VPN or Express route. We can bring our own IP addresses and DNS servers on the cloud. We can create sophisticated network topologies using virtual appliances. We can get an isolated and highly secure environment for your applications, and we can have a better control over traffic between subnets. We could have the security and by implementing the isolation, uh, we can rely on a global, global reach uh, with the power of the cloud. Uh, we can simplify our solutions and reach the global traffic and manage uh, different clients. We can build sophisticated network topologies uh, by optimizing the load balancers, firewalls, uh, traffic flows, and other things uh, with a greater degree of control over the network. We can extend our data center into the cloud. We have an optimized data center and we don't want everything to be on the cloud. We don't want a complete migration and we can bring a hybrid solution in that case using VNet. We can cr create a hybrid application as well uh, using on-premise or cloud solutions and different things. We can use Azure Active Directory for authentication purpose, uh, use various uh, cheap storage options like Blob or Cosmos DB to store our data on the cloud and access things from the uh, data center. We can tap our network traffic. Uh, we can access, uh, bring the IAS and platform as a service together. We can use the networking solutions that is right for us. So uh, for a virtual network, when we create the virtual network act as a container for subnets. So a virtual network consists of multiple subnets. So different subnets could be assigned to a single virtual network and each subnet have an assigned network security group. So the cloud instances included in the subnets have a connection property for the uh, network security groups or NSD. So here uh, we have multiple uh, virtual networks 
and each virtual network may consist of various instances of services uh, like virtual machines, uh, virtual private network gateway, VPN gateway or other database utilities. We have to provide an IP address for each virtual network and we can have different workloads uh, based on different scenarios. We could use uh, the VNet peering in order to connect our virtual networks with each other. We may have firewall authenticator, firewall cluster, the virtual machines and more things there. It could be used to connect uh, different uh, tools here. Uh, with the, uh, Say we have an on-premise network, uh, we have the gateway installed and the gateway is connected via the express route circuit to the cloud, a virtual network. And it is uh, having the gateway for express route and where we have the hub virtual network consisting of virtual machines and network security groups. And with the VNet peering, we could add multiple virtual networks in order to handle a different kinds of tasks, let's say network uh, traffic balancing and more things. We can have a separate virtual network for separate tasks, say for HRA, we have a separate network, for R&D, we have a separate network and for different purposes. It could be used uh, in order to assemble different kinds of things, say web tier, business tier, data tier. We have a separate entity for them and we have the load balancers, the virtual machines and network security group for each uh, entity. And to, in order to secure it from the internet and keep it isolated to some extent, uh, we can install the virtual network here. So this is our uh, VNet or virtual network. We can build a uh, virtual network on the cloud and bring a hybrid solution from on-premise and the cloud. We try building a node solution, till then keep learning and keep moving ahead.